Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fusion 364 FTC series. This is the 15th video in the series. If you haven't watched the previous 14 videos, I recommend you do so by clicking on the card in the corner. In the last video, we started looking at the modify tools. Uh, we looked at fillet, chamfer, shell, um, scale, a few others like press pull. Um, in this video, we're going to be continuing looking at the modify tools, and we're going to be looking at a few of the more advanced modify tools. Um, so the ones that we're going to be looking at today are draft, um, combine, replace face, split face, and split body. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll be looking at joints. So first, let's just take a look at the draft tool. So the draft tool allows you to add sort of like a, a sloped um, a sloped face to a, an object. So the first thing that you're going to select is you're going to select the pole direction. And this is kind of confu confusing, but really what it means is that you're selecting, um, well, I'll just go ahead and show you. So if I select this top face as my pole direction, and I select this face as my, my target face, um, what it means is that the intersection between these two um, faces is going to remain stationary. So if I went ahead and started angling this, what you'd notice is that, that this intersection right here is always staying the same. So that's important to remember. Um, I really don't know why they called it pole direction. Um, it, seems, um, it seems better to just call it, I don't know, like the reference face or something. So just remember the intersection always stays the same. So that's how you're going to know how your draft is going to behave. Um, so this is just a very simple example. Um, it's just drafting the whole face just like this. It's giving it an angle. And there's a lot of stuff here. It seems sort of confusing with like the flip direction, the angle, and the arrow right here. But they all kind of do the same thing. So if I put it at 10 degree, I have a 10 degree slope right here. Um, and I wanted to make this go 10 degrees in. There's a few things I could do. I could do a negative angle, um, just like that, and that would reverse it. I could do flip direction, that would reverse it, or I could click on this arrow right here, um, and that would just um, that would just reverse it, just like that. So pretty simple. Um, that that's basically it for flipping it in the arrow and all that sort of thing. Um, Next, let's take a look at a more complicated example you can do with this because you may have noticed we have these options here. Um, but if we choose them right now, they don't really do anything. And that's because um, the intersection between our, our pull direction plane and our, um, our, our face that we're modifying is at the top. Um, so there's no like, um, there's no part above it that we can also modify. It's just everything below it. So if I was to instead, for our pull direction, if I was to select this mid-plane here, remember I just constructed that by going to mid-plane and choosing this top face and bottom face, and it makes a plane in the middle. If I was to select that instead as my pull direction, uh, and I just have it on one side right now, um, what you would notice is that this intersection is staying the same, and the top is drafting this way, and the bottom is drafting this way, just like that. Um, so this is how it looks with one side and the intersection is at the top of the face. If I change this to two sides, I actually get independent handles here for each side. And now I can change each side independently, just like that. Um, and then if I wanted to do um, symmetric, then I would have one handle. And instead of going in line as they were with the, the one side like this, uh, th they go opposite. Um, this one slopes down like this, and this one slopes up, um, just like that. So it's symmetric across this plane. Um, that's basically it for the draft feature. Um, it just allows you to get slopes on faces, just like this, um, which otherwise you may have had to make the, the cube like this, and then sketch, and then cut out this sort of the, the draft from the cube. When instead you can just use this modify tool, it's really easy to go back and change how this behaves because they've already laid it out for you. Uh, so if I wanted 10 degree symmetrical, it would just be like that, and boom, we got it. Um, and of course, this this plane that I used here, it does not have to be centered. I could have made an offset plane, um, 
above or below and then the the top part would be larger or smaller than the bottom part um, next let's look at combine um, and combine is right here at the top um, draft is not in the, the menu right here but it's right here combine it's also in the drop down right here um, and when we looked at extrude and some of the other tools like revolve and uh, sweep um, we had these options here which were joined cut and intersect um, but that was only when we were creating from a, a sketch we had these options so this time basically you just get those options once you already have bodies in um, and it allows you to do more complex intersections because you're working in three dimensions instead of two dimensions um, so uh, the the target bot. So if if I was to do join and I just selected these, they would um, and I clicked OK. Right now I have body one and body two selected. Um, it would actually become the same body, just like that. Um, so that's all join does. They just it just joins the geometry together. If I was to do um, if I was to do uh, pay attention to which one I'm selecting first. So I'm selecting the one on the right first or the, sorry, the one on the right first and the one on the left second. So the right one is the, the, the right one is the target body and the left one is the tool body. And I was to do cut. What you would notice is that it would, um, it would cut away this material. And if we clicked OK, just like that, it, you would notice that only this part is remaining over here. Um, and we can see the intersection, so it's cut away all of this this sort of stuff right here. Um, we can look at that again. If I selected the left one first um, and we did cut, it would cut away all of this. Um, and then we would be left with one body here. Um, so it's not it's not just deleting this this body because it's also changing the material here. Um, so it's sort of like removing removing the intersection and removing the the tool body um, and then let's look at intersection um, if I just selected it like this and change it to intersect it would only leave the portion that's being intersected so if I clicked OK that would be one body and now we have the intersecting portion so this is just sort of like a um, a, a more advanced way to do the the cut and intersect and join tools just in a, a more complex space not just straight out of a 2D sketch um, so uh, for this instance I just wanted to join these together that's what um, I do a lot is use this tool to join um, but I also use it to cut and intersect a lot as well uh, just like that and now we have one component um, next let's take a look at replace face and this one's pretty interesting right here so this body right here you may notice uh, body 5 it's not a normal body uh, it's actually a surface body and we looked at that just a little bit when we were doing the thicken tool But uh, all I did here is I created a sketch and I made a sort of spline here And then I just extruded that spline out. Uh, this is not a solid body. It's a surface. So remember that uh, it's just a mesh uh, So we're going to use it because this is sort of a common application like how do I turn this top face on the cylinder into a more complex face like this sort of wavy face we got here and the tool for that is replace face so um, the the source face um, is is what you're going to use what's going to be changed so the source face in our instance is the top of the cylinder here and our target face is the face that is going to replace the source face so if I went like this you would notice it would extend it up and it would in fact give it this sort of if we hit this, we could see it's now replaced it with the curve, uh, just like the spline. It's given that that spline shape to it, um, and it's just extended up to the the area that we selected. So, if I was to go back and I I wanted it actually to replace the the face from over here, what I could do is I could move um, my my cylinder like this. Let me just align it roughly. So I want it to be uh maybe like 95 just like that and now if we were do, to do replace face again and we selected our faces just like this 
uh, you would notice that it's now extended up to there and it's replacing it with that section of the, the spline just like that. So that's um, a really easy way to get a, a complex shape like that. And something to keep in mind is that um, yes, the, the face that the target face that you're replacing with, it does have to be above this face. Um, I, I couldn't just like replace it with something to the side. Um, but yeah, that, that's it seems like it's hard to get this sort of spline shape um, on this this the surface easily. Um, you could do a sketch. It's kind of annoying though. Um, but this is an easy way to do that. Um, yeah, just like that. And then um, we have two more tools that we're going to be looking at. It's the split face and split body tools. Um, so the split face tool, um, it basically just, you select a face to split. So I'm going to select this face. This is going to be my face that's going to be split. And then you s select the splitting tool. So uh, this is my splitting tool. And um, just like that. And one, one, uh, one option that, um, hey, I think it, it went away. Let's um, one option that is useful is extend splitting tool. If you have this checked, um, it'll basically extend whatever you're using into a, a plane. Um, it, it won't just keep the, the surface area that you already have. Um, so, but we have a plane, so we're good. Um, and we're going to select this plane as our splitting tool. And if we clicked OK, um, you would notice that this is still one body. Um, it's, it's our body three, and I could move it just like this. It's still one body. But now what we've done is we've, we've split this face in two. The other face over here is still in one. Um, this one is in two. So uh, what, what can you do with this? Well, you can use the press pull command or the offset face command. Um, just like this and now you would notice that it's only offsetting the top part where we split it so This is a really easy way to um, If you want to use some of the other modified commands that deal with faces and not bodies or edges um, This is a good way to um, Create faces uh, without modifying the geometry uh, So just like that you can use the off offset tool um, It's pretty pretty simple um, the split body behaves a very similar way, um, except for instead of splitting the, the face, it's splitting the body and actually creating two bodies. So for my splitting tool, I'm going to go ahead and select the same plane. And what you'll notice is that it, since it's a plane, we can select it here. Even though it's only showing us this rectangle here, it's actually infinitely large. Um, and if we clicked OK, uh, we would actually have body two and body seven here. So I could move these independent of each other. Um, and then there we go, we have two bodies. Uh, there's lots of things that you can do with this as well. You can um, like modify the bodies individually and then rejoin them. Um, there, there's lots of things that can be done. Um, so that was it for today's video. Hopefully you have a good grasp on um, how these tools work. I recommend that you play around with these tools. They can be quite fun, but also quite complicated and figure out ways that you can use it where that I didn't example in this video. Um, I think that the replace face tool is really cool and you can get some, some super complex geometry um, just with very, very simple stuff. And um, I'll quickly model uh, how I created this in case you still don't understand uh, just so you can try it out for yourself. So I'm just going to choose um, this as my plane, pretty arbitrary. And the way I did this is I just selected the fit point spline tool and I just made myself a spline just like that. And then I went to finish sketch and I went to surface and I chose extrude and surface. And you'll notice that there's a lot of the same stuff. Um, and you actually can extrude this as a profile uh, just like that. And now you have it um, and it will create a, a a surface over here. If I was to go in here and try to extrude this, it wouldn't let me. Uh, I, I can't select this because this would not. This is not an enclosed geometry, so it won't create a solid body. But um, we can create a a surface just like that. Um, and there's some other things to look at. We're not going to be covering 
um, surface modeling or mesh modeling in this tutorial series because um, what you're going to be doing in FTC is hard surface modeling uh, for 3D printing or CNC or laser cut, whatever. Um, and the surface modeling isn't that useful. Um, but I encourage you to play around with it. Um, hopefully you learned something in this video and in the next video we'll be taking a look at joints and how to combine different um, components and uh, how to get multiple components into one thing without them all being bodies. Um, Alright, I'll see you in the next video.